CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall with an out-of-the-ordinary story. The kind I enjoy most because its roots are buried in the past. Sometimes, centuries go by before a trait emerges to characterize a person. The argument about environment and inheritance goes on endlessly. One authority insists that how you live is more important than who you are. I'm not qualified to take sides, but like most of you, I think that a person, the essential person, is the result of both. Not equally, perhaps, but that's for you to decide after you meet Gordon Davis, a middle-aged, well-to-do manager of an American bank in Honolulu. I can't explain it, Chung Lee. The explanation lies hidden in your mind. That is why you imagine you saw that open grave. Our mystery drama, The Silent Witness, was written especially for Mystery Theater by Roy Windsor and stars Ralph Bell. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Exlax. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Each of us, each of us is unique. That's obvious, I suppose. But I've often thought about how different one of us is from another. Within a family, no two persons are alike. I'll even include twins. In one pair that I know, Susan is a dancer in a Paris chorus line. Paula has entered a convent. How do you explain that? Same early environment, same background, but completely different in points of view, interests, and goals. That's why Gordon Davis is... But let's meet him in his Honolulu home. Wilson? Uh, yes, Mr. Davis? There's his taxi, right on time. His name is Blessing, Tony Blessing. Uh, right, sir. New chap sent out from New York. I hope he works out. How about first trainee, eh, Wilson? <laughs> no, sir. Well, I'll chat with him until you announce dinner. Is the wine chilled? Uh, yes, sir. And I set hide cocktail glasses and canapes on the veranda. Good. Well, uh, show the young man in and uh, bring him out. I'll ice the glasses. Good evening, Mr. Blessing. Right this way, sir. Oh, thank you. Welcome to Honolulu, Mr. Blessing. Please sit down. Oh, thank you, sir. Wow. The view is spectacular. Yes, it is lovely. Will you have a rum punch? <laughs> rum punch will be fine. Two, Wilson. Uh, right away, sir. Been in Hawaii before? No, no. This is my first visit. <laughs> it's hardly a visit. <laughs> <laughs> right. And the way I feel... Oh, oh. Thank you, Wilson. The way I feel already, I think I'd like to stay here forever. Yes, I felt the same way when I was sent out, and I've been here 27 years. Hawaii is a paradise island, intoxicating in many ways. I won't let Honolulu's magic lull me to sleep. For one thing, I don't play golf. <laughs> Besides, I'm engaged, and Jill has joined me here in a few days. And if you think I'll work out, Jill and I will get married and live here. Good. Marriage, I'm told, is a settling influence. I, I don't know from experience because I'm just a fussy old bachelor. Ah, uh, dinner is served, Mr. Uh, Davis. Thank you, Wilson. We'll be right along. After we close the bank tomorrow, if you have nothing better to do, I'll show you the city. Oh, thank you very much. I'd like to do that. Including our American cemetery. Ooh, that sounds kind of grim. <laughs> it will graphically make my point about the danger of succumbing to the charms of old Hawaii. One of your predecessors is buried there. Oh? A fine young man named Murdoch. Very promising, but he succumbed to the allure of the island. And after six months, he drank himself to death. It saddened all of us. And you visit his grave from time to time? Oh, yes, quite often. The cemetery is restful. His gravestone reminds me that life is transient, after all. 
It is to be enjoyed, not abused. If you will remember that, you can have a glorious life here. Otherwise... I understand. Don't be lured into overindulgence. Yes, exactly. Beauty can be an opiate. Concentrate on your work and remember Murdoch. And now, let us go on into dinner. Ah, Davis. Prompt as usual. Join me. Ah, hello, Chungby. Anything special for lunch? Oh, here the outpost, as you know, the menu varies no more than our even climate. <laughs> Monday means squid. Mm. Well, I think not. A lamb chapel does me. Do you have a pleasant weekend? Yes, one day is like another. My son and his family paid us a visit. His young boy is distracting. He is de- determined to become the first Chinese American baseball star. <laughs> I pray that it is soon. <laughs> How old is he? <laughs> Nine. And each time he visits us, he breaks a window. <laughs> it is a joy to say goodbye to him. <laughs> <laughs> and you? Did Mr. Bressing arrive? Uh, yesterday. Ah, will he do? I hope so. He's personable and intelligent. You'll meet him. Then if you agree with my judgment of him, I'll propose him for membership in the outpost. Oh, we'll gladly co-sponsor him. More and more, the club becomes a retreat for the elderly. It needs new members. The continuity of life is our immortality. A new generation succeeds ours or life stagnates. Well, I'm not quite ready to be placed on a shelf, Chung Lee. Oh, but uh, do you not retire soon? Oh, I could retire now, but I'm only 57. I'll close my desk when I'm 60. Ah, unless you open another in Hong Kong. Yes, that might happen, but I hope not. My roots are here in Honolulu. There is nothing to compare with our lovely Hawaii. Ah, You have lost your ambition to its charm. Yes, perhaps. I cautioned Blessing last night. (laughs) You still remember Murdoch, poor man. Yes. Chinese know that indulgence, like the hunger of a ravenous dog, is never satisfied, and that excess is self-destructive. Well said, John. Unlike Murdoch, you have led an exemplary life. I have known you almost since the day you arrived from New York. Yes, by ship. Yes, you have never been back. I have no real ties there, Chung Lee. One sister with a disagreeable husband. <sighs> if you should be transferred to Hong Kong, you would be missed. Well, it may not happen. If it does, I'd leave, of course, and, well, Hong Kong, like Honolulu, is a remarkable city. Perhaps that is where I'd retire. And not return here? Well, perhaps not. But you just said your roots are here. So are your memories, my friend. Yes, and one of them is still green. Is it regrettable to you, Davis, that you didn't marry her? No. It would have been disastrous. For you, yes. The scandal would have been ruinous. Today, it is different. Back then, it would have cost me my position. And you try to find peace when you meditate in the American cemetery. Is that not so? Uh, You go there often, I know. I'm going there this afternoon with Blessing. On the pretext of showing him the grave of a poor Murdoch? No, I want Blessing to succeed. Advice is not as effective as an example, which is <laughs> which is drawn from a gravestone. Uh-huh. And what advice do you draw from the gravestone of Mrs. Dormley? A man who is subservient to infatuation has lost his reason. She was a married woman, Chung Lee. And subsequently, like a flower exposed to snow, she withered away and died. And I chose to follow my career. I have never talked about her except to you, Chung Lee. A blessing told me that he's engaged and uh, that the uh, the uh, young woman, Jill, I believe he said, will arrive in a few days. And then if he sees a future here, they'll marry and settle down. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Maybe that's what reawakened my memory of the past. Do not dwell on what you remember. The past is a, uh, a funeral gone by. Ah... Uh... Seems like yesterday. It was 20 years ago, and her daughters are now grown women. 
I recall that George Drummery took them back to the States. I wonder what became of them. Wasn't one of them named Jill? Yes, Chang Lee. The older girl was named Jill. It's very attractive, Mr. Davis. Neat and well kept. Thank you, uh, Tony, if I may. Oh, certainly, sir. And uh, I'll not drop, drop this. Uh, no need for it. At the bank, I'm Mr. Davis, but away from it, my name is Gordon. All right? <laughs> sure. Yes, I'm proud of this cemetery. Proud? Well, that's an unusual word. Oh, yes, but appropriate. As you can see, it's in a valuable part of the city. About 20 years ago, an attempt was made to relocate it, but I fought the developer, and with the prestige of the bank behind me, I won. So here, and still in peace, rest the bones of the missionaries, long dead, and many members of our American colony. Well, meaning those born in the States? Yes, of course, because all of us here are Americans, you know. <laughs> and this is the final resting place of Willard Murdoch. Yes. Why wasn't his body sent back to his home? Because among his few papers was a request that he be buried in Honolulu. Oh, I see. He was well liked, and we gave him quite an elaborate funeral. His family bought the gravestone. And he died from overindulgence? He lived beyond his means. Remember that, and remember what happened. Huh. Now, who has died? Pardon? There. It's a new grave. It is? Well, don't you see that hole in the ground? What else could it be? And there's a grave digger. I must find out who died. Grave? Grave digger? What the devil? Well, I must need glasses. Or is he seeing things? Trust you had a pleasant day, sir. Who died, Wilson? What American has died? Well, I know of none, sir. Well, the evening no, 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 no. I walked Mr. Blessing through the cemetery half an hour ago, and two men were digging a grave. I must find out who died. Uh, well, may I uh, fix you a rub and swizzle, sir? Uh, yes, Wilson. I <laughs> can't understand it. I make some inquiries, Wilson. Phone the newspapers and the graveyard manager... Although he's probably gone home for the night. Your drink, sir. Oh, thank you. Oh, by the by, sir, Mr. Blessing telephoned shortly before you returned. Oh? What for, did he say? Uh, to, uh, to inquire how you, were. Uh... How I am? Well, you could see how I am. Why would he inquire about how I am? He, well, he hoped that the tour around the city hadn't tired you out. And uh, also to thank you. Well, that's odd. I'm in the best of health. Are you concealing something, Wilson? Oh, sir. There's a peculiar expression on your face. Oh, well, I'm sorry, sir. Oh, if you'll excuse me, I'll make those telephone calls. Yes, uh, please do. Hmm. How strange. How strange indeed. Does Tony Blessing need glasses? Or has Mr. Davis' mind played a trick on him? Almost 100 years ago, Oscar Wilde wrote that imagination is the result of heredity. It is simply concentrated race experience. There's that word heredity again. I mentioned it earlier, and Oscar Wilde supports its importance in the makeup of a man. Is imagination also an illusion? We'll find out when I return with Act Two. plays tricks on us. From what Tony Blessing said about Mr. Davis seeing things, it would seem that he saw something that wasn't there. But an open grave? According to definition, an hallucination is the perception of objects with no reality. Is that what happened to Gordon Davis? It's the next morning. Uh, shall I serve breakfast now, or will you first see Mr. Luke, sir? Luke? <coughs> He's here? Well, I reached him early this morning, and he said he'd look in on his way to the cemetery. 
Oh. That's very thoughtful of him. Uh, yes, ask him to come in and uh, bring another cup, please. Uh, he might like a cup of coffee. Uh, very good, sir. He will see you now, Mr. Luke. All right. Uh, will you have a cup of coffee? Oh, sure, thanks. Hmm. That's well. Go right in, Mr. Luke. Okay. Good morning, Mr. Luke. Oh, morning. Sit down. You will have some coffee? Oh, yes, sir. Uh, Wilson asked me. And uh, did he tell you why I wanted to talk with you? Oh, something about a new grave. Is that right, sir? Yes. You know my interest in the American cemetery? Oh, yes, sir. All of us do. We keep it real nice, thanks to you. Nothing's run down, and we place fresh flowers on that one grave every week. Yes, it always looks well cared for. I want it kept that way. I understand, Mr. Davis. Uh, your coffee, Mr. Luke. Oh, thank you. Uh, now, uh, about that new grave, Mr. Davis. Uh, Mr. Blessing, he's my new assistant at the bank. Uh, Blessing and I strolled through the cemetery yesterday afternoon, and uh, two men were digging a grave. I spoke to them, but they spoke only Chinese, so uh, we could not communicate. Uh, well, where was this? It's about 100 feet from the gravel path and uh, close to the plot marked uh, Willoughby. The one with the Santa Birds on top of the upright slab. Oh, oh, yeah, I know it. And two Chinese were digging a fresh grave there. I pointed it out to Blessing and uh, went over to it. Mr. Blessing saw it too, huh? Do you uh, question what we saw, Mr. Luke? Well, begging your pardon, sir. Yes, I do. Why? Well, because the last grave we dug there was for um, old Mr. Appleton, and that was over a month ago. Oh, you must be mistaken, Mr. Luke. I saw a newly dug grave, and I spoke to the two Chinese grave diggers. Well, sir, I won't question what you think you saw, but I never heard of these Chinese grave diggers, and I swear to you, in the entire cemetery, well, there, there isn't a newly dug grave. Good morning, Mr. Davis. Come in, Tony. Please uh, sit down. We have to have a talk. Oh, that sounds ominous. If it's about the requested loan for the beach club... Uh, no, 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 no. It's nothing to do with business. Uh, where do you think I went after breakfast? Well, I have no idea. To the cemetery with Mr. Luke, the manager. Oh? Remember the newly dug grave we saw? Uh, yeah, yes, of course, sir. There isn't one. Why did you pretend that you'd also seen it? Well, well, I didn't want to embarrass you, sir. It's a very strange experience. How would you explain it? I, I can't. I mean, a doctor or a psychiatrist might be able to. I've heard of persons hallucinating, of course. Drug addicts have hallucinations. But you look in good health, Mr. Davis. I am. And why would I experience an hallucination? Well, I don't suppose it's an uncommon experience. Uh, by the way, would you have lunch with me today? Yes, thank you. I want to introduce you to the Outpost. It's a very nice private club. Inexpensive, and the food's quite good. You might just want to become a member sometime. All right. And I want to introduce you to Chung Leung. He's about my best friend, and he's a very good customer at the bank. Perhaps the... <laughs> Legendary wisdom of the East can explain that hallucination of mine. In the Chinese, do not think that a hallucination is abnormal. If a person will meditate, he can discover the cause of an illusion. But what could have caused me to see an open grave? A preoccupation with the death, my friend. You are a constant frequenter of the cemetery. You make it sound morbid. I find rest and peace there. If you will meditate to discover why you saw that open grave, you will learn the reason. You may know it now. Turn away from it. Let it sink to the very bottom of your mind. That's what I intend to do, Chang Li. 
Perhaps I should take a few weeks off. Yes, a change of scene, like rain after drought, refreshes a man's mind. You will go to Hong Kong? Yes, I'll uh, take a steamer and pay a visit to old Morrison. Tony can carry on for me here. Jill! Jill! Darling! Oh. oh, let me look at you. May I say fabulous? You better. How do you like my hometown? Don't you love it? I never want to leave it. Hey, how was the flight? Just fine. Hey, will you marry me? I suppose. <laughs> I only bought a one-way ticket. Okay. Pick a church. I'm settling into the job at the bank, and I like Mr. Davis very much. Hey, Hey, let's get married tonight. Oh, you're wild. <laughs> no, I'm not. Well, then you won't have to check into the hotel. No, you're too much. <laughs> no, I'm going to spend my first night in Honolulu in bed alone. Okay. And I'll find myself some cute little native girl. Just you try it, my sweet. And I'll provide a simple burial for you in the American cemetery. Is there anything more, Mr. Davis? A glass of brandy. <laughs> I'm sure you have a good night's sleep, sir. You're very kind, Wilson. Have you spoken again with Tony Blessing? Ah, uh, no, sir. The two of you were worried about me, weren't you? Remember I asked about that peculiar expression on your face? Uh, yes, sir. You did worry us, and Mr. Luke was, Yes, uh... Uh, Mr. Luke. <laughs> you should have seen his eyes when I said I'd seen that open grave. Well, there is no open grave, Wilson. I had an hallucination. Not uncommon, I'm told, and uh, no cause for anxiety. Yes, well, I'm very glad, sir. And so am I. In a way, a very unsettling experience. Well, a good night's rest, and you'll be like new tomorrow morning. I hope so. And, uh, Wilson, I'm going on a trip for a few weeks. Oh, yes, huh? To Hong Kong to visit Mr. Morrison at our branch there. Well, a holiday sounds like a fine idea. And, uh, why don't you close up shop and take a vacation of your own, eh? I thank you, sir. Well, good night, Wilson. It's early, I know, but I don't want to be disturbed. If anyone telephones, just say that I'm away, eh? Yes, sir. Good night. Uh, seven in the morning, as usual. Seven sharp. Good night. Ah. That feels good. Hong Kong. Where we planned. What the devil? the flowers, Gordon. Hello. Of Hello. course. I must be out of my head. No, you're not, Gordon. I've tried many nights to speak with you. Haven't you felt that? I... I fought against thinking about you, Helen. Why, Gordon? Because it, it, it's futile. You died 20 years ago. And I could be lying next to you. No. Right now. No, 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 no. It's impossible. Has your career been worth it, Gordon? What do you see when you sit on your veranda, night after night, and look over the city with its lights winking like fireflies? I've never forgotten you. And I place flowers on your grave every week. I loved you very deeply. Then why, when your husband left you, did you take up with one dissolute after another? You became an unfit mother and lost your children to him. Why? Because you disclaimed me. And I loved only you. You became common, vulgar, drunken. I wanted to forget and to die. If you had spoken one the resulting scandal would have ruined me, Helen. You should have left the island with George. Instead, you chose to stay here and to die. I am content now. I've never stopped loving you. I need you still. That's an absurd thing to say. I'm... I'm sorry about the past, but I don't regret the decision I made all those years ago. Yesterday, I had an hallucination. And tonight, a visitation by... By a what? A ghost? Or are 
are you in my mind? I'm leaving Hawaii as soon as I've made my arrangements. I know. There is one thing you don't know. And I don't intend to have you find it out. I know what that is too, Gordon. Good night, my dear. Good night. Oh. Oh. Oh, my God. Oh, good Lord. Oh, good Lord, what a nightmare. I'm covered with perspiration. Helen... I've lost touch with reality. I, I'm possessed. An old proverb holds that a guilty conscience needs no accuser. When you close your eyes at night to go to sleep, conscience comes awake. Here is Mr. Gordon Davis beset by a decision he made years ago to sacrifice love for a banking career, which has been highly successful. But what he did to Helen Drumley still haunts him. I'll return shortly with Act Three. Let's not fool ourselves. That small inner voice that each of us has within him speaks the truth. If the voice is positive, so are we. If, however, the voice incessantly reminds you of sin against another, it can, without question, affect your well-being. That's why, in prayer, we ask for forgiveness and hope that it will be granted. The next morning, Tony raps on Mr. Davis' door. It's a lovely bank, Tony. Really, very attractive. Good morning, Mr. Davis. Good morning. I want you to meet my wife to be Jill Trump. Jill Gordon Davis. Why? Well, welcome to Honolulu, Miss Trumley. You, uh, you brighten my old office. <laughs> Please, uh, sit down. Thank you. And, uh, congratulations to you both. Oh, thank you. We're getting married on Saturday. In the church where Jill was christened. How very nice. I was born in Honolulu, Mr. Davis. So even though I've not been back here since I was four, I am a Kaman now. A native born. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, and your, your your parents? They're both dead, I'm sorry to say. My mother's buried in the American cemetery. My father died last year. They were divorced long ago. My sister and I got the impression that... Well... That there was another man. My mother was a beautiful woman. I've got to track down that little mystery. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, well, I wish both of you happiness. May I ask a favor, Mr. Davis? Would you consider being my best man at the wedding? I, uh... I'd like nothing better, but, uh... I'm leaving Friday on the steamer for Hong Kong. Uh, otherwise, I... Of course, I remember. Well... Well, thank you. I'll get back to my desk. And I'm going to hunt for a place for us to live. Goodbye, Mr. Davis. Uh, yes, yes, sir. Uh, goodbye. My friend, distress lines your face. Are you ill? I uh, know, Chung Li. What sank to the bottom of the ocean has come to the surface. The young woman Tony's brought over to marry is Jill Drumley. The daughter? Oh, how unfortunate. It's a hideous coincidence. Oh, the long arm of fate. And last night I had a nightmare. Or saw a ghost. Helen Drumley appeared and spoke to me. I'm on the verge of collapse, Chung Lee. Did Jill Drumley identify you? No, no. Drumley never talked to his daughters about Honolulu, what happened here. She knows nothing about her mother and me, but... But she will. Uh, all the acquaintances. Hmm. Perhaps she will find out. Yet nothing ever was proved. Dromery's accusations were suspicions. And your friends were unsuspecting. We were very circumspect. Yes. You loved her. I still do. But Dromley would not divorce her. Or you would have married her. I don't know. 
My position is yes. to the bank. And she loved you? Yes. yes. A man has the choice of beginning love, but not of ending it. There were men in her life after me, Chang Lei. You say that to ease your conscience, my friend. The situation is intolerable. How, how can I face Tony every working day? It's an impossible situation. I'll go away for good. Well, where will you go? I don't know. I'll take early retirement. Is young blessing qualified to replace you? Except for experience, yes. I will miss you, Gordon Davis. Fate, you said. Fate is capricious. What is written is written. Davis and I stopped you the other day, but I didn't read the name on the gravestone. Helen Drumley, born April 9th, 1918, died December 1st, 1957. Only 37, Jill. How tragic. The year I was four, my father took us back to the United States. Should we sit on this bench for a while, Tony? <laughs> of course. Lovely flowers, aren't they? You know what else I did today? Are you slaved away? Oh, besides visiting the church and meeting the minister and finding a flat for it. I visited the public library, and I read back issues of the newspaper from 1950 right up to Mother's obituary. Oh, why? Well, to find a clue to the person who broke my mother's heart. I see. And guess what I found? Go on. A society gossip column intimating that my parents were about to split because of an attractive and successful young banker. Oh, like me. Don't joke, I'm serious. Who could that young banker have been? Can you guess? Oh, good evening. Oh, hello. I'm just strolling through, are you? Uh, no, uh, not exactly. My my mother is buried here. Oh, you're the daughter, miss. Yes, I, I'm Jill Drumley. Who are you? Oh, Luke, I'm the manager of the cemetery. Oh, been here for years. I, I remember your mother. Beautiful woman. You look just like her, Miss Drumley. Thank you. Her grave has been well kept. Oh, we take uh, good care of the entire cemetery, and, and we're well paid for it. Oh, Mr. Davis sees to that. Uh, he's the American banker. Just about the most prominent man in the city. Gordon Davis? Yes. Uh, the cemetery's kind of a hobby of his, if you know what I mean. No, I'm not sure I do. Well, to hear it's a little bit of the United States. I mean, we're all Americans here, to be sure, but this plot of land uh, and Americans buried in it long before we became a state. Mr. Davis likes to see it kept up as part of history. Well, it's about as much as I know. And and the beautiful flowers. Oh, I put them on Miss Drumley's grave once a week. Oh, and is that part of the uh, perpetual care? Oh, no, Miss... They're provided by Mr. Davis. They are? What? Do you know why? Oh, can't say that I do. Well, well, don't don't stay too long. I close the gates at 530. Gordon Davis. What? What are we going to do, Tony? Sit down, Wilson. I have bad news. Well, I'm sorry to hear it, sir. I'm going away for good. You're leaving Hawaii permanently, Mr. Davis. Well, where are we off to? Hong Kong? Uh, no, Wilson, not Hong Kong. And uh, I'm going alone. Oh, well, that is a blow, sir. Uh, have I... Oh, no, uh... no, certainly not. You've been invaluable. Well, then may I ask... You've you... been with me since 1952? That is right, sir. Mr. Blessing is being married Saturday. Yes? To a young woman newly arrived from New York. Her name is Jill Drumley. Good heavens. It's an unbearable situation. Uh, yes, I, I can see that. I killed her mother. But hardly sad, isn't, isn't that melodramatic? Could not have married her because she could not obtain a divorce. Because I did not want to be named in the suit and risk losing my position. 
I loved her dearly, Wilson. Why didn't I risk my position for her happiness and mine? Well, I... I can't answer those questions, Mr. Davis. Oh, but I can. Because I love the bank. Can you imagine anything more preposterous? I love the bank. The balance sheets, the interest charges, the entire orderly, monstrous, calculating business. And my life reflects it. I'm nothing more than a cipher. And a fraud. But after Mr. Drumley did divorce his wife... Oh, by he... then I had rejected her. She changed. My moment with her had passed. But she still haunts me. I am very sorry, Mr. Davis. But who look completely tuckered out. I hope that someplace you will find peace. Thank you. Don't worry about yourselves, Wilson. I'll give you a year's salary. Oh, sir, that's too generous. Oh, I can afford it. Thank you for listening to me, my old friend. Now I'll go up to bed and hope to sleep. He destroyed my father's marriage. I wish he were dead. What do you want me to do, darling? Confront him and quit. Will you listen to reason? It's irrational to make accusations without proof. What about those newspaper reports? Gossip. All right, what about the weekly flowers he places on her grave? Why, out of all the persons buried there, would he select my mother's grave? Well, Davis, I may have loved your mother. I say that he did. She was a beautiful woman, and many men may have loved her. Oh, Wait, no, 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 okay, okay, don't interrupt. Now, did your father ever accuse Davis or any other man of adultery? No, not that I know of. Did your mother ever profess loving Davis or any other man? But how would I know? Well, you don't. You can't hate Davis just because of a rumor or because of the flowers. Now, he's a disciplined, meticulous kind of man who might have adored your mother, but well, would never would have thought of telling her so. But then why did she die when she was only 37 years old? Tell me that. Honey, I haven't the Vegas, and it's so far in the past. Can't you forget it? No. I have to find out why my mother died of a broken heart. And who, may I ask, handed you that hackneyed old phrase? My father. That's all he'd ever say about my mother. He said it sadly, as if, in a way, it was partly his fault. Well, Mr. Luke. You're up very early. Well, can I see Mr. Davis? Well, I don't wake him until seven, and that's not for almost half an hour. Uh, I don't quite know what to do, Wilson. Uh, all right, what may I ask? Well, you know the other day, what he saw in the cemetery? No, the newly dug grave. Yes, yes, I know about it. And there wasn't any grave. Yes, we know that. Or grave diggers. Well, what are you getting at, Mr. Duke? I... I saw them. You you saw the grave diggers? When? Well, certainly not this morning. Uh, last night. I was closing the gates and I saw them. I yelled and went back toward them. And, and they vanished. Then I went back to the path and, and I saw them again. I couldn't sleep. So an hour ago, just about sunrise, I went over to the cemetery and... And opened the gate. And? There were no grave diggers. But guess what there was? I, I'd rather not. A newly dug grave. You actually saw it? Sure, I saw it. I didn't imagine it. Mr. Davis did the other day. I know he did. But this time there was no halloo. Well, whatever. It's a grave. And nobody's died. And nobody's ordered me to dig. Well, maybe Mr. Davis knows about it. That's, that's why I came by. Uh, pour yourself a cup of coffee. I wake him up. And that is how you found him, Wilson? Uh, yes, Mr. Chandley. Fallen between his desk and his chair. And this is his letter of resignation. And you, Miss... Uh, Miss Jill Drumley... 
Yes? May I ask how you know? I know your mother. And the resemblance is marked. What did the doctor say, Wilson? A massive cerebral hemorrhage, sir. The ambulance will be here shortly. I'm so sorry. I've only known him a short time. But I respected him and I'd grown fond of him. He was my good friend. He had a premonition of death. That hallucination about the new grave? It has been dug, Mr. Bressing. What? Mr. Rook confirms it. It was dug last night. I I don't understand. Who who ordered a grave to be dug? No one. Begging your pardon, that that just doesn't make sense. It does to me. I'm convinced, don't ask me why, that Gordon Davis and my mother loved each other. He turned away... And she died of a broken heart. His conscience killed him. He willed his burial. But who... Who dug the grave? It takes a couple of live men with spades to dig a grave. Are you certain, Mr. Blessing? Another phenomenon... To be practical, yes, to dig a grave, you need a man or two with tools for digging. A spade. So, was Mr. Luke deluded? He swore that he saw a newly dug grave. Why might he have been deluded? Because Mr. Davis' troubled conscience forced itself into the minds of others so that they, too, could foretell his fate? And was the grave dug, for surely it was there, without anyone being conscious of it? Well, these are truly inscrutable questions. I'll have a further comment when I return shortly. In the simplest terms, conscience, whether you heed it or not, is our guide. When we go against its dictates we begin to accumulate a mind filled with already made decisions which throughout our lives are always there to haunt us. As Thomas Brown wrote 300 years ago, there is another man within me that's angry with me. It's conscience, of course, the silent witness. Our cast included Ralph Bell, Marion Seldes, Lloyd Batista, and Earl Hammond. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by x and Buick Motor Division. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs>